Hello, welcome to our show. We haven't quite decided the name of, but this should be about technology, technology. and games and reviews and how to do oh, stuff on computers oh, yeah. and so. also music related as well. Some videos might be showing you stuff on guitar or keyboard, whatever, maybe like drums. That. Yeah. And reviews and websites. Good. So today, Matthew, Matthew I'm Matthew, uh, 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 he's Matthew, uh, I'm no, he's Matthew and I'm Tom. No, I'm just kidding. Nah. Um, <laughs> right, so Matthew today is going to show you a view of what games you have. That is DC Universe. It came out Friday, last Friday, I'd say, not this Friday because it'll come out today. Well, it's about all stuff like superheroes, things like that. You have to, like, build your legends, which, when I say legends, I mean character. As really good graphics, and hopefully there will be some gameplay. Um, I've already started playing it, so I actually think it's pretty good. You get like one month starting trial of it, and there's like hero and villain, like standard, usual comics and things like that. So it's really good. I think you should give it a try. It cost me about forty pounds, which was a lot. Well, but it day it came out. Um, yeah. So it based on subscription, great graphics, do what you want, it's a MMO, which is more massively multiplayer game, and you get to control everything really. It's really awesome to get like different powers, bows, bows, I mean weapons, well I've got a bow, like level 10 fights I think. Um, you get things like acrobatics, flying, super speed, it's really good. You can like meet other people online, like I've met one of my friends online, just like run, run around doing anything. <laughs> so that being my view, I suggest that you might want to give it a go. Maybe um, there's a case. I'll be a picture on the screen as well. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be it. And Tom. Um, well, I'm going to show you how to do a web um, glossy button in Photoshop. You don't necessarily have to do this in Photoshop. You could do it in GIMP or Paint.net. Um, basically, this just means it's a button that you can use on a website or in a program, say you're making Visual Studio. Um, we'll be switching between the cameras and can I just say that on the day recording this video is the 21st of January, so all stuff relevant is going to be stuff from today. Right. And um, you can just switch over to the instructions. Instructions? Ah, there. Right. Instructions. Just so I can do the wrong way. I'm going to switch over to the laptop. Right, now the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go up to, in Photoshop, this is CS5, you're going to need to go up to File, New and we're going to need to create a width of 400 pixels now it's very important you do it as pixels not inches centimeters or anything like that you want pixels which is computer measurements um, and a height of 300 you can obviously change these yourselves but um, I'm just going to keep them as the standard things for the particular instructions I'm using and the resolution is 72 pixels an inch, don't worry about doing it. Um, the uh, colour mode is you need to be 8 bit RGB and the background colour of white. And um, once you've done that, just quickly look at the measurements, you click on OK. And then you'll get a sort of almost a square. And then um, here you're going to need to come over to your layers palette and you'll see at the moment we have a default layer of background. We need to create a new layer simply by clicking on this little page down here. And then we just going to need to double click the name. Make sure you do the name not the empty space otherwise you get the blending options. And we're going to need to call it button. Now um, once you've done that, we need to go to your tool palette over here and hold down on, it should be rectangle by default, but you need to hold down on that and go to rounded rectangle. This can be any shape you want, but most buttons are rounded rectangles. And then before you actually start drawing, you need to come up to your styles up here 
and give it a radius of 7 pixels and the first pattern here needs to be checked and then the rounded rectangle one obviously and the style can be left as that and then we just need to draw a rectangle now you don't have to fill the whole page this is just to give you some work space to work um, yeah um, just draw a super rounded rectangle I'm going to draw one say that big and you'll come to uh, whatever default color you have you just need to uh, um, make sure you're on the button layer when you create it and then you need to right click on the button layer and go to blending options now here we have various layer styles we have drop shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow etc and the one we need is we need drop shadow so tick that and then click on it now our blend mode has to be set to multiply um, we need an opacity of 33% and an angle of 120 degrees distance of 0 pixels uh, speed of 0 pixels or percent I should say this is spread spread oh, yeah, spread speed, spread. sorry <laughs> um, I've got a small screen here but yeah spread um, and the size needs to be set to t 10 and you see here you might not be able to notice it but it has already created it this will just give it a just a sort of lightened effect and the layer knocks out drop shadow needs to be ticked um, quality here make sure you're on the first one with a noise of zero and the next one inner is shadow. an inner shadow so we select that and again the blend mode needs to be set to multiply an opacity of 20% now the colors in these should be black and uh, an angle of 120 with the use global light a distance of 0 a choke of 0 and a size of 64 pixels and then again same for the quality just leave it as the defaults and then um, our next one we need to do is we just scroll down. The next one we need to do is a bevel and emboss. Simply tick on that. Now don't worry about ticking these contour or textures. We don't need to do these. Just the bevel and emboss. And our style needs to be set to inner bevel. And you can see if I just move this over here, you can see it's starting to take shape already. And um, our technique needs to be set to smooth. A depth 100%. Now direction um, needs to be up because if you have it down, it will make it look like as if the button's actually synced into the page, which you don't want. You want a button to be standing out so people know it's a button. Um, a size of zero pixels and a soften of zero pixels um, an angle again is 120 with use global light opacity is 50 percent and the opacity needs to be set to 50 percent and the same for the shadow mode now highlight mode should be set to screen and the shadow mode should be set to multiply the altitude should be also set to 30 degrees and the next final one is um, final effect is a gradient overlay now see here it's given us a gradient which we don't um, use as a default you can use it as uh, white to black but it doesn't really look that good I mean you wouldn't really want to click on that would you <laughs> no so Bright we're going to uh, go to a blend mode of normal I want pretty colors <laughs> an opacity of 100 and um, we don't want it reversed and you just want to double click on the gradient and you'll go to an editor 
which you need to select a color colors I should say and any color click on the first one yeah any color you like I'm just going to use a color code of BB0000 a bit like Blue Peter I made one of these earlier so I know my <laughs> color requirements um, <laughs> now, um, then the second color I'm going to choose a light red of F E zero 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 zero. And I made one of these. Now, <laughs> yeah, when I recommend doing the gradient overlay, I recommend doing colors which are similar, that same sort of shade. You can see here there isn't much of a um, gradient, but there is some, which is gives it a little bit of um, a beveled effect. Now, believe it or not, on the YouTube logo. The, the U of it is actually got a gradient overlay on. It goes from a dark grey to a black. You may not notice it, but believe it or not, it has got one on. Now, once you've done that, you just click on OK. And then OK again, once you've set yours to um, scale of 100% and angle of 90, the style should be lin linear and align with a layer. Let's click on OK. Button should look like that. Yes. If we just click on this grey space here, you'll see it gets rid of the selecting line around here. Step three. <laughs> right now, Boom. step three is creating the glossy effect. And now um, we're going to need to create a new a layer oh. called glass. Yes. Simply by clicking this. Little page down here. It's not called glass, there's no R in glass. It's glass. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if you use capitals, I'm not going to. That. <laughs> right, so once you've created that layer of glass, you're going to need to select the rectangular marquee tool by simply holding down the select tool up here and clicking rectangular marquee tool. Now you're going to need to. Um, make sure you have the button layer selected then on your keyboard hold down the control key and then click on the thumbnail which basically means the little picture here and you can see it selects all of the rectangle and then we're going to need to hold down the alt key so take take your finger off the um, control key hold down the alt key and you're going to need to cut across the lower half of the button just like this and you, your cursor is turning to a cross with a minus below it if you look at that you can see the top part of it is now selected the top half of it and then we're going to need to fill the selected area with white but make sure you now click on the glass layer And we need a bucket tool and then a foreground color of white or FFF 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 six F's <laughs> and just simply click in that area one make sure you, you have the glass layer selected and you can see it's now built in Uh, just click and click until it goes completely white, or you can do alt backspace to fill it in completely. And now you're going to need to come over to the opacity and select it to 18%, so 18. And you can now deselect by um, pushing Control D, or simply by going up to select and then deselect. And your button should be looking something like this. Try and get it in the middle, uh, the line to end in the middle as much as you can. I'm just doing it quick here, but you would spend too much more time on it. And you can see it sort of, it made it like a pink colour. Now, step four step is four. a pattern overlay. overlay, which basically gives the button some slight pattern overlay. Um, to do this, we need to use a 
custom stripe pattern of five pixels um, but you can use any pattern you want now we're going to I'm going to show you how to create a custom pattern and why am I and that's just loading up right so we're going to need to now go into a new document and we're going to file a new and if you want you can save it as a button PSD but I'm just create this first width is 8 the height is 8 and 72 pixels an inch and our 8 bit and then background color of transparent and click OK you should get a really tiny box like this but if you zoom in by pushing control plus orange um I kind of um go <laughs> up there we are you should see now it makes it much bigger and these the way you know it's transparent is because it will have the white and grey squares and now um or well you can also go to view and then fit on screen if you wanted to and then um, we're now going to um, this is that you can see here it's 3200 percent zoomed in which is quite a lot you're going to need to draw a simple pattern like this making sure you have black as the uh, color and I know the brush is quite big but we're going to sort that out now simply by pushing your left bracket or the square bracket I should say and you want it as a square one uh, let's find a square one, I don't know if I have a square one you must have a square one you don't I'm just going to go over circle one, it should hopefully yeah fill it in so I'm just going to click on the edge slightly like that, keep on clicking so you get one square black you're going to want to do that again and then up here now if you want to we are going to save this as a PSD and then put it on our website and um which you can then download rather than saving you doing this but you can do it if you want now don't worry about the squares below going black as long as they don't go completely black you're fine just like that one has I'm just going to fill in these then I'm going to get my eraser and just quickly erase this <laughs> erase this and I need to come back and just an extra one down here and you can see you have sort of a stair pattern here and you're going to want to do that on this side here but not straight from the corner if I just go up like that you're going to need to start it about there I'm just going to keep on clicking to fill this in completely black or you can go over it like that why didn't you do that in the I don't know This video is going to be about an hour long. <laughs> Two minutes! Come on! This video will be in ten parts, people. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> ten parts, more than like hundred parts. This is going to take a while. Please stand by. 
entry Boo. commission. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency stupid broadcast channel. Boop. <laughs> Now, I know I've done that wrong, all of it, but I'm then going to get Easy the eraser. eraser, rub this one out here, and then come to one here, two squares across, and one up. So she should end up with a pattern sort of looking like that. I'm just going to make it a little bit more visible like that. Um, that does actually look a little bit wrong. So I'm just going to come in, pull that one back in. That that should look that should be roughly about pattern. I'm just going to do one here. And then I'm going to delete this square here. Once you've done that, right? So I've just made my basic pattern here, and I'm just going to touch up on a few um, what's it called? squares I thought they were circles <laughs> right now to save it as a pattern don't just go to file save us we actually need to go to the edit menu so if we go to edit now you can do this while it's zoomed in it doesn't matter it won't affect anything if you go to edit and come down to define pattern and then call your pattern name so i'm going to call this um just a stripe strip And then click OK. And right, so now back. once you've done that, you need to go to your um, button, cool. back to your button. And then we are going to now, um, Sorry. we go to click on a new layer button. And click the new layer button. Again, double click on the name and call this pattern and don't forget any time in the video you can rewind and watch it again if you get stuck or if you get bored <laughs> and then you're going to need to double click on the any of the layer apart from thumbnail or writing or you can right click and click on blending options now as I said you can do this in GIMP or paint.net you don't have to do it in Photoshop it's just Photoshop is much easier then we're going to need to go to pattern overlay and choose a pattern you should see here we have a pattern I have one here I made earlier <laughs> but anyway I'm going to click on the one I made earlier or you see here the one here I click on the one I made earlier then I'm going to click on OK And then we're going to need to go to the paint bucket, click on pattern, choose the pattern we have, and then click on the thing, and you can see it then fills it over. And we're just going to adjust the opacity until we're happy with what we want. I'm going to leave it at I like 24%, that looks quite nice. Now you will see around here. 25% sorry. Um, around here it does do it on the white space as well but when you go to edit um, you can always crop that down once you saved it you can use something like Microsoft Picture Manager or Paint um, or anything just to crop it down. And then our final thing step is to um, final step, step five, five is to insert the text for our button. To do this, this is simple, just click on the text button down here. I'm just going to wait for it to load.
and then I'm now there going to um, click in roughly the middle and then type my text so I'm just going to type in button for this oops I can spell button and then I always do a for this button for this particular style of button I like to have the font on trebuchet ms and it the font style on bold and then it have it on 24 point 24 pt which is 24 point and this is sharp now if I was to click on my move tool you can see here we have a nice sort of button and it puts it straight in the middle for us like that trying to get the center as much as you can Photoshop should automatically align it and then I'm going to change the text color to white Ding dong. to make it stand out and then I'm now going to um, click on this text layer here and now I'm going to just rename this layer to um, awesome. button text I'm going to rename that so I don't get confused and I'm going to go right click blending options and then we want to add a drop shadow blend mode of multiply the opacity of 44%, angle of 120, is use global light, and then same as before, distance a zero, spread a zero, and size should be six. And then you're gonna want to come down here, just leave these as defaults, and then click on OK. And you should get something that looks like this. I'm just going to come in and adjust my opacity of the pattern slightly to about 50%. There we are. And then this is what you should have. Now you can go ahead and save this as a PSD. Or what you can do is then just move, is then. Um, Go to File, and click on Save for Web and Devices, not Save As. If you're just going to use this as an application, you can click on Save As. If you're going to use this on a website, um, click on Save for Web and Devices because it makes it much smaller so it doesn't take forever to load if you have a slow internet connection. Now, down here, just click on, um, you can untick transparency, but it doesn't make a difference to the file size, so we can keep it ticked on. And then I recommend doing a pin 24, but you can do whatever you want. Leave all these as default. As you can see here, it's uh, previewing it and it gives us an estimate of how long it will take to load on a slow connection or a standard connection. That's 56.6 kilobits a second. It takes three seconds. And it's 11k, which is kilobits, again, kilobytes, I should say. So, three seconds is not that long to load, is it? No. So, I'm just going to click on save. It will, it will, it will be a long time in dog <laughs> seconds. And then you're going to it will bring up a save dialog and you're going to oh, save thanks. it anywhere. So, I'm going to save it into my document as. Um, Glossy oh, button, Tom. glossy button. Now, what you can do is um, make the button different colors. Um, but before you do that, save the original one as a PSD, and then come in, save it for web and devices. And you want to make sure it is on images only. Default settings, and just click on save and it's now saved there we have it and there we have it there is your button as I said you can make different colors of these all you need to do is change the gradient overlay and everything will stay the same apart from the gradient overlay of course Yay. 
and that's how you make a glossy web button so now what I can do is I can go into my documents and then bring up the button you see here if I bring it up in Microsoft Picture Manager PNG. see it's 400 by 300 but that's with the white space so then what I'm going to do is just come to edit pictures crop and choose the error to crop again what I recommend you doing though is make making the background um, transparent transparent and so in that way um, you don't get all the white space in behind it from the corners it can affect it sometimes click on OK. Now that's a bit rush but you can see that looks like an OK button. Just click ahead and save. And there is our button. Uh, I never know it was a button. <laughs> of course it's button. And you can also change the text in here, make it different colours if you wanted to. And that is how to make a glossy web button in Photoshop. Right, this is just a brief summary of the video, and this has um, been the first ever sh um, episode of a show we have not decided to name yet, name but it. on the time of uploading this video, it will be named, and you'll see we have to edit the video and the website. I know what we can do. So I'm not going to give out a website address or email or anything yet, because again, we haven't decided on the name, and also the website well, we haven't decided the website layout and stuff yet. So, um, yeah. Why don't we ask the viewers to post something on the channel of like suggestions? Um, yeah, we can do. Since this video is being posted on my channel, which is youtube.com slash Yola Computers, um, we um, put a um, what's it called a comment, comment in the box below. And, um, about suggestions for the name. Um, that if we haven't um, Made decided on the name yet, and we might change it in the future. <laughs> um, but um, again. Um, for summary of the video, Matthew was doing a review of DC Universe. Or, you, or if you go to my YouTube channel, Supplier 753, where you see me, the ultimate slip, in HD showing lots of videos. Yeah. <laughs> Links coming on the screen now. Um, don't forget, you can visit my website at thomas.tc.com, which is my personal blog. My live stream. Um, at live.tc.com my twitter account which is twitter.com slash thomas carter uk um facebook fan page is not quite set up yet um well you can also go to um not quite well not finished yet but uh, when it is finished you'll be able to go to the forum of geeks um where we'll be posting questions um from the community and stuff and then you can answer them you can log in and then answer them um i think have you got a website yet yes and that is the arctic camel and uh, yeah, i was in written. today i was doing a video on how to make a glossy or web button in photoshop gimp or paint.net um i hope you enjoyed the first episode of an unnamed show and until the next one um shall right. we end it bye